I was, uh, I was just looking for you. You found me. I thought maybe we should, uh, talk about the other night. Why? What happened the other night? Sure. Come on, let me, let me buy you a cup of coffee. Thank you, Mrs. Vega. Oh. Yeah, I, I didn't want him. I think you're on her list. I did fire her son. So why did you want to come into hostile territory? Good coffee is, um, it's hard to find. You came in here to check on Mrs. Vega, didn't you? She has protection, but I like to check in once in a while. So, uh, I guess we should get to the real agenda. Yeah, the real agenda. Okay, what I wanted to say was, um, about the other night in, in the house, you know. It was an extreme situation. Exactly. Too much wine, locked in a tight place. It's not like we planned anything. God, no. God, no. We, we were just there to help Mary Barnes, you know. We, we, we just got, uh, sidetracked. Right. Side, sidetrack's a good word. Sidetracked. And you know that, um, I have someone in my life right now, and I, I just, I really don't want to hurt him. I understand. Okay. Great, then. So, how is Mary? Who's that? <laughs> no, she's, um, she's under... <laughs> She's under 24-hour guard. I was um, just as shocked as Mrs. Vega when I heard that Antonio had been fired, but I was one of the few people that knew he was working undercover, so I thought, you know, maybe they were connected, but I don't know, and I won't pry, you know, because you can't uh, tell me anyway, right? No. That's one of the things I like about you, Lieutenant. You are... Discreet. Just one thing. My point is that you don't give up much professionally or personally. Hmm. Kind of like somebody else I know. With the exception of one particular night. But that was the exception. People who are stranded together do all sorts of things that they wouldn't normally do. It happened on Star Trek every week. Besides, what are the chances of us getting stuck like that again? I'd say... Excuse me. McBain. Miss uh, Barnes, hello. This is Nigel calling from the front desk. Yeah, go ahead. Terribly sorry to disturb you, but some lovely flowers were delivered here. And I'm afraid... I'm not able to leave the desk right now. Would it be possible for you to come down and get them? Two minutes. Nothing okay? I'm sorry, I gotta go. RJ. So, you do remember me. You have a nice time with your cop, with Bane. I think it's past time that I asked you about uh, you and this McBain. I mean, <laughs> you and I had been seeing each other regularly. I believed you enjoyed it and me, and then you stopped returning my calls. No, RJ, that's not true. I have been returning your calls. We've just been missing each other because I've been busy. I told you I, ha I have this case and it's consuming me. I, I have a client who came to me for help, and he was murdered. And now his girlfriend is in danger, too, and she asked for my help. And John is investigating the murder, which makes my client his witness. So I'm counting on him, and I'm only counting on him to keep her safe. Oh. 
Thank God. I am so relieved. Thank you, and uh, thanks for calling to let me know. Okay. Bye. <sighs> it, it looks like my client is safe. The, uh, the police just called to tell me that they think they got the guy who was trying to kill her. So... Well, I'm glad to hear it. But, uh... Was that John calling and letting you know the good news? RJ, did you hear what I just said? A woman's life was saved. Damn it, Van, stop playing games with me. Are you having an affair with McBain? Van, look, it's not difficult. Just answer the question. Are you... RJ, do I look like the kind of person who would have an affair on the side like that? I'm gonna go. No. No, please, you stay right where you are. I think I got my answer. I'll leave. It was not an affair. You still got the picture I gave you? Well, that's good. She's sitting in the Angel Square Diner right now. I want you to follow her, tell me everywhere she goes. I want to know everyone she sees. Yeah? <laughs>